Hi fellow Webflowers. So you're quite new to Webflow and want to enhance your website with some fancy scroll animations. In this video, I show you all the basics you need to know and how to apply different animation types to your website. After understanding the basic concepts of scroll animations, we will dive into the following examples. How to animate text like this and how to make cool parallax image effects like this. So let's get into it. So here's the fundamentals and they are actually pretty easy. Each scroll animation has a trigger, an action and a target. This is the element to which the action is assigned to, or in easy words, the element you are animating. The trigger can be an element that scrolls into view or through the viewport. This is an example for scroll into view animation. Each of the images you see is a trigger for the animation and at the same time also the target. And here you can see a while scrolling in view animation. The trigger is the parent, the action, the growing of the video and the target, the video. So the big difference between both is that scroll into view animations have a certain scroll position where the animation starts and while scrolling in the view animations happen while you are scrolling up and down the website. Oh, and by the way, if you want to become a top-notch Webflow developer, then you should subscribe to my channel. Um, I share frequently new videos like how to structure your project or improve your workflow and serve your clients uh, a better way than the average. So let's have a look at the interaction panel before we dive into uh, the animations itself. For this, I have prepared a little example. We are going to animate this square here. So to create an animation at first, you need to select your trigger in the designer. Depending on the kind of animation, this is either the element itself or any other element. So let's select the square and then click here on interactions. Now you have two categories of triggers to choose from, element triggers and page triggers. Element triggers are stuff like mouse clicks on elements, mouse hover over elements, mouse move over an element to animate something on the um, X and Y axis or uh, when an element is scrolling into the view or while it is scrolling through the view. And page triggers are mouse moves in the viewport to animate an element on the X and Y axis or while the entire uh, page is scrolling or to start an animation when the page is loading or when the page is scrolled up or down. For my example, I choose mouse click on elements. So the next you will see is you can choose an action on the first click and another action on the second click. This option with the second click you would choose if you have a hamburger icon that becomes a cross on the first click and becomes a an hamburger icon on the second click when you open and close a menu. Um, if you select an action you can choose between ready-made standard animations and creating a custom animation. Let's choose one of these ready-made ones and see what is happening. When you click on this button, you can see the preview of the fade animation. And here you can choose either a fade in or a fade out. On this slider, you can set the delay for the animation. So if I choose fade out and turn on this preview mode here, you can shake your animation. Now when I click on the square, it will fade out. Furthermore, you can find here some trigger settings. You can define on which breakpoints you want the animation to happen. And you can decide either the animation is attached to a specific element or to a class. The class option is very handy if you had a lot of identical elements on your page and you want them all to have the same animation. An example of this is, for example, an FAQ layout uh, with these accordions. You click on one and it opens and you click on another one, this opens and the other one from before closes. This can be done um, with something like this. So when I choose class and duplicate my square, the animation is automatically applied to each new square. That's the magic uh, with the class option and check how beautiful this is. 
Lovely. Let's delete one square again and give the other one another color and adapt the shadow. So the problem with ready-made animations is that they are pretty limited. You can't apply more than one at a time to an element or class. And on the fade animation, for example, I can't change any variables like the duration or the easing. And here, custom animations come into play. With custom animations, you can do almost everything. In this box, you will see all your existing custom animations, but we haven't created one yet, so that's why it's uh, empty. I click on the plus icon to create one and name it something like crazy square animation. Okay, next I can define actions. And here you need to know that at first you have to choose the element in the designer you want to create an action for. Uh, so if uh, you want to animate the green square, I need to select it. Um, now I can choose something like move from the actions dropdown. Most animations have two statuses, a start and a final status. So this is my start status and here I want nothing to happen. That's why I can choose zero delay, zero duration and here 0% on the x-axis. I could also check this to set it as an initial state. Uh, with a right click on the action, I can duplicate it and this is my final status. Here I can move it by something like 400% on the x-axis. I can set a duration like 2 seconds and now I can preview the animation by clicking this button. Ah, wonderful! But you will notice the animation doesn't look natural. Um, normally objects accelerate and slow down and here easing comes into play. You can set your custom easings here, but I use 99% of the time uh, the presets. So for example, I can choose ease out. And if we have a look at the preview, you will see that there is uh, no acceleration, but at the end, the square slows down. You can choose something like ease in out if you want the square to accelerate and slow down. Um, or you can choose something uh, more dynamic like in out quart. And if we now want to preview our entire animation, we save it, choose here element and turn on the preview mode. Remember that our trigger is the violet square and that we applied the animation to the green one. That means when I now click the first square, the green one will move. Ah, what a beautiful animation. Let's get back to our animation because there's a couple of more things to discover. So down here, we have a lot of options. In the first drop down, you can choose if the animation aff affects the class or the selected element. Interaction trigger here is only available when the trigger and the action are applied to the same element. So in our case, if I wouldn't animate the green square, um, but the violet square. Most of the time I choose class over selected element because each time you copy the element, the animation gets also duplicated in the background and this will just blow up your uh, JavaScript file uh, for your website. And here you can choose between different options. To understand them, you need to know that the options are about the hierarchy in the HTML document. All elements with this class means if I click on the violet square, all green squares will animate it at the same time. Or I can choose only children with this class. What means that the green square would need to be in the violet square to have an effect. Only siblings means that the violet square, and remember the violet one is the trigger we need to click, and the green one are siblings that share one parent if. Uh, only parent would have an effect if the violet square would be within the green square. Okay, was that... Um, Clear enough, <laughs> maybe next time I should draw something like this, um, but I think you will get it, I hope so. Um, yeah, but anyway, and now let's pimp our animation a little bit. Um, let's select the green square, click on the plus icon and choose rotate. I'm dragging the rotate action and drop it on the initial uh, move action, so it also becomes an initial state. Now I duplicate the action and drag it on the final state. Here I give it a rotation of 360 degrees on the z-axis this time. 
Uh, notice this little warning sign here. Uh, this means the action has no value applied. We need to give it a zero degree on the, x, uh, on the z axis. And the final state, I give a duration of two seconds and easing of, um, let's choose in out quart as well. Um, but what if we want to loop this animation? For this, I'm selecting both final states by holding shift while I click on it. With a right click, I can duplicate them and now I can adapt their values. We will move it back to 0% and also rotate it back to 0 degrees. And what we see when we click the play button is one iteration of the animation. To loop it, we have to click save and then check here the loop option. Now when we turn on the preview mode and click our violet square, the green square will move and rotate until all eternity. So now you've learned the basic concepts, uh, let us make some real life animations and we will start with this text animation here. So let's have a look at our HTML build. Um, actually it's pretty easy. The only thing, uh, the only trick is that uh, these lines are separated um, the f and both are in a parent diff and this parent diff has this class overflow hidden and um, yeah, it just has overflow hidden and um, the same thing is applied uh, to the second line. And a pro tip here, uh, these headlines, they have the class H2, but actually they are just text blocks because um, I guess for SEO reasons, it wouldn't be that good to have um, multiply H2s here. Um, the real H2 uh, is this one, as you can see, this is an H2. Um, something you maybe should uh, consider if you are building an animation like this in Webflow. Exactly. So, and that's it. Actually, so now let's select our H2 and you can see there's already a uh, trigger set up. Let's go to interactions and let's delete it and start from new. And what I want to choose here is a scroll into view animation. And uh, we want a um, custom animation, so we start one. There's nothing yet, so let's um, create one and let's call it something like uh, text animation. So um, let's apply an action, uh, we use a move and this is our initial state. So we are going to check this and we are moving it down on the Y axis. So that's why I'm choosing here 1.5 EM like this. Now you can see it disappeared uh, because of this um, overflow hidden parent and I'm duplicating this one and this time we are moving it back to 0 EM and here here we go uh, we use a duration of one second and maybe an animation of out quart and if you preview it here you can see um, how it gets into view like this um, next thing I'm going to apply is an opacity so I take it and drop it here. So it also automatically gets an initial state. Let's um, turn down the opacity to zero, duplicate it, um, drag the duplicate here. And yeah, I think it's always good if the opacity is a little bit longer than the other an animation. So that's why I choose 1.4 seconds. And let's choose also out quart and opacity 100%. So, and if I pre preview this, you can see we have this nice animation. Let's save it. And now let's um, change this trigger settings to class. So this is automatically applied to all H2s. And you can see now here, it's also applied here. Um, now let's scroll up a little bit and press play. You can see it already happened to this one and also to this one. And there's now one thing you can change, it's this offset here. So when the offset is on 0%, this means the animation will get triggered as soon as the element enters the viewport, like this one. And if it's something like 20%, it will get triggered uh, once it's like 20% uh, scrolled through the viewport already. So in this case, I would always uh, choose an offset uh, because Otherwise the animation can start too quick and happen too quick and uh, it's not really visible to the user. So let's turn on preview mode again. 
And you can see I can scroll, 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 and now it comes. Maybe that was a little bit too much. Uh, so let's turn it down to something like 10%. And yeah, you can see like this, looks great. So our next animation will be this image parallax. Um, watch it while I'm scrolling over the page. I can never get tired of this. I, I love this um, effect and it's so easy to achieve. So um, let's have a look at the HTML build at first. You can see, um, yeah, the, all images are packed in a grid. It's a grid with uh, something like six columns and uh, six rows and um, I placed all the images like manually in here. Like yeah, I, um, I defined a start column and the end column and the start row and the end row for each of them. And each image is in an image wrap. I gave it a ratio, um, overflow hidden and position relative. I think position relative is actually not necessary. So let's get rid of it. And uh, within there, there's the image itself. Um, yes, yeah, set to max width of 100%. And I have a scale here. Um, this is actually necessary while the animation you will see later. Um, and the scale is to something like uh, 1.2. If I turn it down to one, you can see it fits directly into um, uh, the parent. But when we are scrolling on the page, we want the image to move up and down. And that's, uh, that means that we need some more of the image uh, on the top and also on the bottom. And that's why we uh, need a scale here. So let's get into the animation, select an image, uh, go to interactions. And this time uh, we choose while scrolling in view. So that's a continuous animation while we're scrolling and um, yeah, I play a new animation and Let's start a new one, uh, parallax image, I call it this time. So first thing we do is I'm going to apply the scale here as well, because otherwise the animation will reset the scale uh, we have set before. And you can see this little um, warning sign here again, that means I've um, I've set a value here, but no value here. So I have to do the same here. Um, so next thing is we want to animate it on the Y axis. Um, so that's why we choose a move. And we start here with a value from minus 10%. You can see what was happening. It was moved here to the edge. And I'm going to duplicate it like this. And here we will um, move it to 10%. So the opposite direction, or maybe let's choose something like nine. So it's not totally at the edge. So we have a little bit more spacing here. Um, actually, that's it. The only thing uh, we can also apply is some smoothing. Um, I think everybody knows what that is. It just makes the um, animation feel a little bit more uh, natural. So, and we also um, apply it to class. So it automatically gets applied to all other images as well. And now if I turn on the preview mode uh, and scroll down, you can see this nice parallax effect. And yeah, actually that's it. So if you've enjoyed the video uh, and you also want uh, to learn the fundamentals of the Webflow CMS, you can watch this video now. Otherwise, thanks for watching and as always, stay in the flow.